it's alive guys we've got this thing finished up we talked about in this in a previous video and everything we had to do to get this thing running we're going to talk about that right after this let's get started so we're actually going to talk about two jeeps today they're both 83s this one's a j10 that one over there was a jeep wagoneer that one's coming apart. This one's back together. We're going to talk about everything that we've done to this one and what we're doing to that one. This one came in. The customer had most of the fuel injection set up installed himself. But like I said in the last video, he had back surgery and it just prevented him from going any further. He just couldn't do it. And he didn't want to have a dead vehicle that's dead in the water. So he brought it here to let us finish it up. And we have done that. Let's take a look under the hood. So you can see that distributor looks out of place, and that's because it's basically an 80s General Motors HEI that you would find in an 85 Chevy Blazer or half-ton truck or whatever. It's been converted over to that. That was done before it was brought here. Underneath this air cleaner is a General Motors throttle body injection unit, a throttle body, TBI I guess you can call it. You can kind of see it there, Mrs. Wizard's trying to get a picture of it. And it had an aftermarket wiring harness, kind of a standalone setup. Most of the way installed, it just wasn't finished. Also, we had to run fuel lines and a fuel pump, fuel filter setup, and everything like that, and get that done for him. Inside this cake pan, which is actually a baking cake pan, there's relays, the ECM, and fuses, and things of that nature. And you can see the wiring comes out. It was just a bunch of bare wiring when it came in, but we kind of got it looking a little nicer with some corrugated tubing, split loom is what it's called. We ran the powers and grounds, we had to wire in the distributor. Had to do quite a bit to it to make it run. We did run fuel lines as well from the fuel tank and it works. So it runs, it drives, it's alive. It actually runs very well. But just like so many times whenever we do these types of things for a customer, a vehicle has been sitting a little while or Maybe they're halfway through a project and they can't finish it up. What we originally estimated, we went way higher. Way higher. And it's because once we got it running, the rear main seal was leaking. Everything that we did here in the shop was electronic and fuel related. We didn't touch anything else. Called the customer up. This guy's really cool. He's very understanding. He's like, well, I don't want to drive it that way, so we need to get it fixed. That added another few three, four hundred dollars to the bill, almost five. Then we got it running and found out power brakes weren't there. It did have brakes, but not power brakes. So we had to chase all the hoses and vacuum lines and things and found out that they had the brake booster hooked into the PCV system. There's no vacuum there, not to run a booster anyway. So we had to reroute some of that run new vacuum line to an actual vacuum port for the booster. And after we got all that done, the fuel gauge didn't work. And we f found that the sender was bad. But the customer had reached the maximum he wanted to spend. He said, I'll take care of that at a future date, but I'm glad you guys got it running and driving. It's got brakes. It runs great. Car Wizard, how is it that all of a sudden all those things start going bad while they're in your shop? The fact is that they were already bad but there was no way to tell until you can get the engine running. It was non-running. No way to start it and test that out when it came in. That was not able to be found out until we finished up everything we got going on here, got it on the lift and checked for leaks, and it was just literally pouring out of the rear main seal. Those are the type of things that the customer may have known about a year or two ago, and it's just like, okay, I'll take care of that when I get to that point, and they forget about it. In this case, I don't even think the customer realized that it was leaking, or maybe it set long enough that it dried out and it went bad. But these are the situations where, even though this guy was very understanding, I have had customers that are not understanding. They're like, no, you didn't quote me that. You didn't tell me that's what the bill's going to be. How can I quote that if I don't know that it was bad? And there's no way to know that it's bad until we get it running. So. That's one of the reasons why I kind of shy away from doing these types of situations where the job is half done because I don't know what kind of 
hidden surprises are there, things that are going to be like, oh my goodness, how did they, or what's going on here, you know, I didn't know that this was wrong or that was wrong. It really can turn out to be a bad scenario for the customer and for the shop owner. But when this guy brought this vehicle and a thousand dollars cash and said, if you need more, give me a call. I knew that it was a, I was going to be able to do my job and get this thing right for him. He wanted it right and he was happy to pay for it to be right. That's a scenario that's a win-win situation for the owner of the vehicle and the owner of the shop. There was no gouging involved here. We didn't run the price up. We did exactly what we were supposed to do and charged accordingly as we went along. When we found the various issues like the brakes weren't working or we found out the rear main seal leak, we didn't just go ahead and do it without the, the customer's authorization. We called them every step of the way. Hey, we found this, we found that, would you like to fix it? It's gonna cost this much. And he said, yes, let's go ahead and move on with this or that. It wasn't like he showed up with a surprise bill and like, oh my goodness, I didn't authorize any of this. Everything that's been done is authorized and going to be paid for. Half of it's already been paid for because he left us a thousand bucks. I'm really thankful for that. In a previous shop I worked at, my mentor always told me, you never call the customer more than twice. If you have to call them more than twice, then you haven't done your job as a, as a service writer or a shop owner. But I don't believe that that stands true today in our day and age here in 2021. We live in a day and age where customers can look up prices of things online. They can kind of price shop or price compare and kind of get an idea of what it's going to cost. And I have found over the last few years that customers actually enjoy that you call them three, four, five, even ten times and say, here's where we're at here. Here's where we're at here. This is what it's going to cost. And they feel like they have some modicum of control over the situation. They don't feel like they got taken advantage of. So that old saying from my mentor, if you have to call more than two times, you've done something wrong, that's 1970s thinking. This is today's thinking. This is the way I handle my shop. Let's head on over to the 83 Jeep Wagoneer. This also is a 1983 Jeep, but it is not a J10 like the one we just looked at. It's a Jeep Wagoneer. And you guys have seen a video on this one previously as well but there's a lot missing out of this vehicle. We're doing a mild restoration on this vehicle, not a full-blown restoration. And this again is another one of those scenarios where I felt comfortable to take on this large of a job because the customer showed up and wrote a check. He said, here's $4,000. If you need another four, give me a call. That's the type of customer that understands that this type of work is not done for $800 or try to undercut or try to find parts online and say we're going to undercut you because I don't want to spend the money. This guy's like, let's spend the money. I want it done right. I know you do good work. Let's get started. So that's what we did. You can see that there's some rusted areas that we got sanded and we got kind of a base coat and then we're going to go back over that with the correct color. And as you can see, there's no engine. Let's take a look. The AMC 360 is missing out of this vehicle. It's off to the engine rebuilders and being fully rebuilt and ready for reinstallation. The transmission's already been rebuilt. There's receipts to prove that, and I also can verify that by just seeing that the torque converter's been painted and the, on the bottom side it looks brand new. We don't do engine rebuilds or differential rebuilds or transmission rebuilds here at Omega. The main reason why is because we have so many different makes and models that come through the door. There are transmission shops that specialize in European transmissions or American domestic transmissions. There's no way we could have all the tooling and all the setup and all everything for so many different transmissions. It doesn't make sense for to try to do that. And there is a reason why transmission shops exist, because that kind of work is not done at a general repair shop, which is what we are. We're not a deep repair shop. We don't tear things down to their bare bones and rebuild them. We don't do that here. Could I rebuild an engine? Sure. I've actually rebuilt several over the years. But it's very time consuming and by the time I find all the tooling and everything and buy everything that I need to do that one engine, I may not do an engine like that again for another three years. So it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense for me to go out and buy all that stuff. And it would tie up the shop for a really long time. We've installed, at the customer's request, an updated brake booster. It had a single diaphragm and now it has a dual diaphragm. That's what he requested. There was nothing wrong with the old booster, but that's what he wanted. 
he brought the part here and I happily installed it. We've got the radiator, condenser, a whole bunch of different things out. They're going to be replaced with new, new hoses, new lines. You can also see that the HVAC box and all those things are also missing. And if you take a look at this picture here, you can see that Chinchilla, which is my new hire, he's my apprentice, one of my apprentices, he had that all apart and found a rat's nest inside. I'm really glad we decided to remove that because that's nasty, it's disgusting. So we've got it all apart and I've got some Fridgy Fresh from BG that I used to disinfect the inside and it's all going to be cleaned out. So here we have the evaporator core, which he wants new. And here's our heater core, which he also wants new, replaced. Here's all our HVAC duct work. Like I said, we've had it out and disinfected and ready to go back in. Here's our AC blower motor, our heater blower motor. He's going to also replace those with new. As you can see, luckily he's supplying his parts, but I'm, everything I'm pointing out is cha-ching, cha-ching, the price, it just goes up, 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 up. And this guy's really cool with that, and I'm really, he's really a pleasure to do business with. As you can see down there, there's more HVAC duct work. It was packed full of a rat's nest. No longer it is, it's been cleaned out and ready to go back in when we get to that point. On this car here is a lot of engine parts, so like that we likely will not be going back in with. He's going to have an upgraded intake manifold, upgraded valve covers. He's going to have fuel injection. We're going to install a fuel injection system kind of similar to the J10 we just looked at. Upgraded distributor and a whole bunch of upgrades. So those parts probably will not be going back on. Here we have some parts that he's going to have sent off for sandblasting and also he wants all of these re-chromed. We're going to have that taken to a shop that can re-chrome them all for him. So, as you can see, the price is going up. And here we have most of the interior removed. We have carpet and panels and things off to the upholstery shop that we use here in Newton, low in upholstery. He's very trustworthy, does excellent work, and that's where I've sent. And me and Hoovy, Hoovy uses them as well. We sent a lot of stuff to him. Very good work. We sanded a lot of things in here and repainted with a base coat as well. There was some slight rust that we took care of. We're going to be putting some Dynamat down for sound insulation and for corrosion protection. The headliner is also off and sent to low on upholstery and being relined with new headliner. The dash is in good shape. We're waiting to hear on the gauges. We're also going to have to repair this little piece. He the customer showed that to me. He was like, I bought this vehicle and the thing fell off. I was like, well, we'll definitely have to fix that for you. There's lots of parts and modules and pieces out of the dash that's been either replaced or removed. It has a brand new clock. The customer wants to get this vehicle done and drive it and not worry about the heater core blowing out or the clock dying and, and then the mentality comes along, why didn't we take care of that while we had it all apart? In his mind, it's like it's all apart. Let's do it all. Let's go for it. So that's what we're doing. All along the body, we have things removed because he wanted the little gasket that goes between the component and the body replaced. So there's a turn signal gasket missing there. You can see that we have the rear view mirror or side mirror removed. He wanted a new gasket there. Also on the roof, the roof, however you say it, these little gaskets here. He wants them all replaced. We have all the, the rack removed off the top, so we're going to replace the gaskets, get them re-chromed, and get them reinstalled just the way that the customer would like to have them done. Back here at this tail light, you can see, just as the customer told me, it used to have the wood paneling. But the, the owner before him had it all removed and had the vehicle painted this original dark blue metallic color. At some point in the future, he's going to want to have all that reinstalled. He'll have to take it to a body shop for that, but I really like the wood paneling as well, and he wants to put that all back on. These pieces are off for re-chroming and also a new gasket piece to go in place of that. We're going to be replacing these window seals, not seals, but seals that go along here. Felt, I guess you call it. Those are all cracked and destroyed. We did replace some wiring and also a switch and some things inside of here to make his window work again. And now it is fully functional where it wasn't before. So he's going to be very happy to have that going. Here we have where the 
the wood paneling was on the side and it was removed at some point and it was actually rusting in here. We have sanded it and painted it with some base coat as well just to keep the rust down. And we'll get a new gasket and put on here and that'll all be covered back up but at least it won't continue to rust. And this is some of the, the wood paneling still left over. And as you can see the headlight buckets are missing the square headlights. We're going to be replacing those with new. We're going to be taking these fog lamps off because the customer says they are not factory. They are not original to the vehicle. He has another bumper to replace this one because he doesn't want one with holes in it. And we're going to be taking care of a lot of things here in the front end like the there's the receiver dryer and some different fixing up some of the wiring and stuff that's in there. Getting everything up to snuff. The guy I've had doing most of the work is my new hire. His name is Tegan, but Hoovy gave him the name Chinchilla because he's a little goatee. He looks like a chinchilla, I guess. When Hoovy gives you a name and it stick, he just sticks with you. You just have to deal with it. My name's Car Wizard. There's Magic Mike over there, and somewhere around here is Junior Mint. Hopefully, he's working. This is a perfect job for Chinchilla. He has schooling. He went to technical school to learn to be an auto mechanic, but he doesn't have experience. And this is a perfect vehicle for him because there's no rush. The customer understands it's going to take a while. And he's learning so much on this vehicle. They don't teach you in school how to break bolts loose without stripping it out or how to do drill out bolts if you do strip it out. All those things, they don't really teach you. That comes with years and years of experience. I'm happy to pass those things along to him to show him this is how you do this, this is how you do that. This is a perfect vehicle for him. He's been on it now for a couple of weeks. Just little bits here, a little bit there, just constantly going. It's a perfect, perfect situation. Both of these Jeeps had really good bones. You've seen in the previous video on the J10 that's over there, the bed is immaculate. The paint is not perfect, but there's no, not even a dent in it. It's just perfect. That's exactly the way you would want to find one of those. This one has been taken care of. It's in very good shape. It's a perfect candidate also to take it to the next level because we're not having to pull the body off the frame and totally just gut the whole thing. The rest of it's in really pretty good shape. It just needs to be taken, like I said, to the next level. We're finishing up a few more things on the J10 and it's gonna be out of here. The customer's really excited to get his truck back. It's gonna be a running, driving truck. When it came here, it was not. It was on the back of a tow truck. This one drove here, but obviously it's not driving now. But it will be when it's done and it'll be so much nicer when it is done. So one Jeep's done, and this one's halfway through its process. I'm very happy to get this one out of here and have a happy customer. We like happy customers here. So check my Amazon affiliates link if you're curious what kind of tools we use to do these types of jobs. All the tools we use in the shop are listed there for sale. We get a small cut and we appreciate that. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, I really recommend you do that now because we got Malibu updates, we got 38 Olds updates. There's all kinds of cool things and yacht is going to be coming up soon. Yes, yacht is going to be coming yes. up soon. Yes. Yeah. So, thanks for watching, guys.